I like to challenge my colleagues by asking them, how much time are they spending looking outside of their own specialty for solutions that could potentially help their clients, their patients? Look, it's hard enough to stay up to date within our own specialty, let alone other specialties. And then of course, everything outside of what? Traditional medicine. But our patients are looking for that. And they're going elsewhere for those solutions that could in fact be hindering your treatment strategies or perhaps even supplementing or enhancing them. But are you aware of that? And so part of the doctor's guide, as well as the masterclass fuel, I bring to you insights and of technologies, resources, and solutions that you could potentially implement in your own practice to support your patient needs, but also to give fuel to your own practice. And so join me in these interviews with these different technologies and products and resources that I bring to you as curated products that I believe will benefit you, your practice, and your patients as well. My conversation today is with Don Moxley from Spermidine Life, talking about a product called Spermidine, something that occurs naturally and enhances the process of autophagy. And as you all know, autophagy is essential for normal health. We know that there's programmed cell death, and we know that the body needs to rid of uh, dysfunctional cells, dysfunctional organelles, and remove proteins and then pathogens in this fashion. Because failing that contributes to what, neurodegeneration, diabetes, cardiac disease, and ultimately cancer as well. So autophagy is essential. In addition to that, we also know that there are different um, clinical situations that slows down autophagy. And so it wouldn't be helpful to have a supplement that actually enhances autophagy. You see, not everyone can exercise the way that they could. Not everyone will fast the way that they could, both of which enhances autophagy and helps with normal health. But again, what if we can enhance autophagy even further with a product? And that is the content of this conversation with Don Mox. So to give you a little bit of a background on myself and our company, my name is Don Moxley. I'm trained as an exercise physiologist. Um, I've spent about 25 of the last 35 years as either an assistant or an adjunct professor teaching the exercise sciences. But um, in 2015, I left academics, um, had a wonderful four years at Ohio State as a sports scientist. Um, learned a lot, did a lot of really cool work, particularly around the concept of heart rate variability and understanding recovery and, and, and working with that, which eventually has moved me into working with product supplements and things like that. Um, uh, about a year and a half ago, I was contacted by uh, the CEO of Longevity Labs USA, and he asked me a question. He said, uh, what do you know about autophagy? And I said, well, I'm, I'm, I have a passive understanding of it. And he said, well, what do you know about spermity? And I said, well, that's a new term for me. Um, and he said, well, do some work. Let's research this because I think we're on to something. And, and what had happened is um, uh, Longevity Labs Europe, Longevity Labs Austria, um, was formulated a little over three years ago based on the research by a uh, a PhD at the University of Graz, Dr. Frank Medeo. And Dr. Medeo um, started looking at using this polyamine called spermidine. And his first work was looking at it in uh, senescent cells. So, and, you know, cells that are, that are basically, they call them zombie cells, but cells that are no longer productive. They're sending off a lot of reactive oxygen species. And, um, and they treated them with spermidine and they see a reversal in these senescent cells. Um, so there's, there's some process going on that's, that's a healing process. And what we have found is that um, spermidine is a key molecule in the autophagy pathway. So when, and, and again, if we take a step back and talk about autophagy, 
Uh, we, we see it, a term autophagy or autophagy. I mean, you, both terms are, are appropriate, but it's, a, it's an internal cell cleaning process. So apoptosis is programmed cell death and, and senescence is that intermediate step. Well, autophagy is a cellular cleaning process that either helps prevent the senescence or will catapult it, you know, when, you know, there's times when cells do need to die. If it's a cancer cell or something like that, you do need apoptosis. Um, but this autophagy pathway, it's, it's, a, it's an important enough pathway that we've given two Nobel Prizes uh, in, 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 in understanding uh, autophagy. The last one was in 2016, 2016. And um, so we're really starting to get a handle on how autophagy works, what are the pathways, and, and when we start talking about medicine and, and, and moving away from treating symptoms and starting to look at how do we help people thrive, well, apoptosis is an important part of that process. And spermidine, the, the, the polyamine spermidine is an important part of, of that uh, uh, autophagy pathway. Yeah, I think this is brilliant because what, what we need to understand, and it's interesting you mentioned the Nobel you know, Prizes, because a lot of that is now being given to you know, biological pathways, including right. autophagy and some other ones, which is, it is important for us because you know, we then begin to recognize that um, <clears throat> we can address the root causes of problems rather than you know, treating them with drugs. And, and therefore, having that opportunity to optimize health. And so, so that's exciting. And, and from my understanding, you know, when you've got these senescent cells, they're dysfunctional cells and, and they basically create some toxicity in the system. And so it's, it's, it's disrupting, you know, the tissue homeostasis and therefore the body actually needs to get rid of it. I mean, it's a, a process that's evolved over millennia in millennia, right? And so right. whatever reason these cells stay here longer now it's my turn to that's your turn huh i get called and um and so therefore um you know to optimize you know we need to get rid of these cells in, in a faster way because with all the let's say environmental disruption that happens in our body we have a lot of cells that are dysfunctional and it's important to get rid of those but here's my question for you because you know some people talk about uh, fasting as a process to speed up, you know, um, autophagy. And mm -hmm. so spermidine has a way to actually by, uh, uh, bypass the normal process of, of autophagy. Is that correct? Well, I, I think what I would say is that spermidine is a key element in the autophagy pathway. You got to remember autophagy in a cell is always present, but the question is, is it upregulated or downregulated? And, and um, when we start to look at you know, unfortunately, we live in a time where um, the down regulation of autophagy by the ever presence of high carbohydrate food, you know, is doing all it can to suppress autophagy all the time. Therefore, and it, again, when, when autophagy is down, inflammation is up, you know, it's, they're almost opposites of each other. Um, so, you know, so yes, so, so, um, so fasting is the trigger we typically use. What we're starting to figure out is that um, evolutionarily, there are multiple triggers to the autophagy process. It's an important process. Um, but I think when we look at it, we have so much, we have so much sugar, we have so much carbohydrate in our diets and available that that process just gets suppressed dramatically. So number one, if we can, if we clean up our diets a little bit and get rid of the process, lower the insulin and the IGF response, well, you're going to have an increase in autophagy. Um, but along the way, we also know that people who live well into their 90s and hundreds have spermidine levels similar to those in their 30s. So what we know is spermidine tends to decline with age. Um, now, what, we, what we're starting to see from research is that dietary intake of spermidine in these well-aging populations seems to be an important part of that. So what it tells you is spermidine is critical in this pathway. So as you raise spermidine, you raise the autophagy process. And that's what the data shows 
from model organisms right now. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward there. Um, so again, you know, this is that, this is that challenge of living in, in our society and the environments that we live in, you know, we have, we have food and, and, and rich energy calories present all the time. Um, you know, it's, it's near, you know, uh, we didn't evolve to have this much energy around us. Um, and we evolved to move a lot more than we do. We know that exercise is an autophagy trigger. Um, we know that, you know, we know that, that, that movement is an autophagy trigger. We know that as you lower the carbohydrate and lower the, the insulin response, those are autophagy triggers. We know that sleep is an autophagy facilitator. And we, and so when you start to look at these key elements, uh, and I, I call it the four big rocks of longevity, movement, uh, food from natural sources, quality sleep and light. Um, those are all very important aspects that are that really boil down to autophagy and to uh, the prevention of these um, inflammation, inflammatory based diseases. Yeah, and and I think it's that's a critical you know perspective for us to re remember because in this technology advanced world that we live in. You know, the average person, I think, um, you know, sitting, you know, 10 hours per day and, um, and exposed to all sorts of other kind of environmental stressors and toxins. And so the truth is, is that, you know, we, we're swimming in a toxic soup. And so it's affecting our cells and, and that internal um, toxicity with these senescent cells becomes a problem. And so that's why it's supplementation. So getting the right amount of sleep can be challenging for some. Being doctors, of mm -hmm. course, that's that's one reason. You know, stress as well. Lack of movement is another one. And so getting that assist, you know, with a supplement like spermidine, I think is critical. Because one thing, you know, you mentioned, which is which is so true, is that we consume too much sugar. And and it's interesting because as I I have changed my diet and. I, I'm now specifically measuring my carbohydrates and I get shocked all the time. Just half a cup of, of cantaloupe. I mean, now I've exceeded the amount of carbohydrates that I should be having for the entire day. Sure. So now I'm struggling to make sure I just only have protein and fats, you know, to optimize my own health. And so here again, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge for all of us to find that optimized lifestyle because not all of us can be outside in the sun you know, running around um, and getting all organic foods. So it's important for us to get that support. And who else is it important for? It's also our patients. And, right. and I'd like you to share any kind of experience a clinical experience you might have that you're allowed to share with us. I know there's limitations to what we can talk about, but here's the truth. And this is why I like to have conversations regarding these kinds of supplements because it's an, an additional tool that as physicians, we can now offer to our patients. Right. So can you give us some perspective of that perhaps and, and what doctors can do? Well, I think one of the, so, so let, let's go down the spermidine pathway right now. So to talk about what we can talk about that has been published in human studies is that, um, you know, we have a great human study that came out of Germany that shows that spermidine supplementation in older adults with dementia, it prevented the, ons, the, the further development of, a, of dementia when, when these people took, took the supplement. So, you know, the control group did not have, did not have uh, spermidine. Uh, um, we have the spermidine group. The spermidine group, the dementia held steady. The control group got worse. Right. Um, so we have that. So that's a great study that we have. And, and along the way, we also see an incre increase in hippocampal thickness in the brain. So this is you. So we know it crosses the blood brain barrier. So we know it's playing a role. And I think this is the thing I'm most excited about is uh, we see a protection of Alzheimer's uh, 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 vulnerable portions of the brain. So, again, looking at that cellular senescence and autophagy and neural cells, I'm really excited about what's going on there. Um, the other key element that we saw, we have a study that was published back in February, and they were looking at um, COVID, they're looking at human immune cells supplemented who were infected with COVID, supplemented with spermidine, which stopped COVID transmission 85, 90, 92% of the time. 
And, and when you understand COVID, you know that it's attacking the autophagy system in the cell. That, you know, there's a great paper that came out about three weeks ago that looking at this, that it overstimulates the, the, the front of the autophagy pathway, the autophagone production, and it interferes with the digestion of those um, autophagomes and the bonding of the lysosome. But if you have uprated autophagy from other sources, exercise, fasting, uh, you see the digestion of that. So it actually, so when you look at, at the, when you look at COVID and the challenges that people have, you know, it's those, it's those, oh, what's the term I'm looking for? I can't say it. It's the, it's the um, comorbidities, the, the comor, and when you look at them, these are inflammatory related uh, comorbidity driven, uh, problems. And again, it's living in that autophagy pathway. So we've had, we've had two really good studies in that area. Um, so we know there's an upregulation of autophagy. We know there's an improvement in immune response. We know there's an improvement in cardiovascular performance. You know, there's a great article out there that I recommend if you want to get into it, it's called autophagy and health and disease. It's published in cell, um, and it's a great review article. We see an upregulation of epithelial stem cell production too, which means improved hair, skin, nail, and wound healing. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of good things going on at, you know, in human studies, we have, again, we have much more in, in a model organism studies on this, but, but certainly again, I'm most excited about when you take a look at spermidine as a tool to help with the prevention of dementia, to help with the prevention of Alzheimer's, you know, those diseases that really take the, take your soul, take yourself, right. you know, right. um, I think that's what I'm, and again, when we look at the challenges of living in the, in, you know, you know, I just spent about five days in Las Vegas um, and it, what a cross-sectional view of society, number one, but number two is, you know, not only, you know, food, you know, sugary food is everywhere. Um, and it's, that's not, that's everywhere in this country, not just Las Vegas, but um, this is the price we pay. And, and again, when we start to take, you know, sugar, the problem with sugar, the problem with refined carbohydrates is the insulin response, the insulin like growth factors and the suppression of autophagy that comes with that. Yeah. So these are all key elements for us to consider as physicians, because one thing that, that I promote in my master class, you know, for any of those physicians you know, who are part of it, is really to understand the biometrics that we need to look, like, look at, including micronutrients and microbiome and all that, and to help you know, support our patients with better choices, you know, lifestyle choices, supplement choices, and, and actually monitor that. So that's kind of part one of of the health optimization. But in addition to that, you know, without any specific monitoring uh, or measuring is we need to begin to implement, you know, products like sper uh, spermidine because that has more of a, a global response, you know, to the tissues. And so that's simply an add on. So this is something that doctors could potentially recommend in their office, right? Absolutely. And, and, you know, Listen, if you have that patient that's come in that's, you know, horribly type two diabetic and, 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 and not managing it well, I'm not sure it's going to do them a lot of good. Um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot more things that patient needs to fix first. Um, I, I don't think you can take spermidine and use it to um, overcome the effect of drinking a six pack of Coke every day. Um, but, or at least drinking one first thing in the morning, last thing at night and and eliminating, you know, fasting or a sugary cola, maybe I should use instead of a brand name. Um, but, um, but when you do have someone that has a handle on, on their plan, that, that they're looking to optimize, they want vitality uh, in, in what I call the third third of life. I, we do a, we do a talk where we talk, you know, we spend the first third of our life learning and then we spend the second third of our life in service to others, either family or work. But um, it's our third third. So my wife and I, our daughter moves to Chicago uh, next weekend uh, to take a job coaching up at Northwestern. And she's out of the house. You know, we, my wife and I start our third third, uh, uh, first of January. Yeah. And um, 
this is the first time, you know, this is really the first time it's just, you know, when, when, for a short period of time, when she and I first got married, but you know, you're in the work circle and doing all that, but now she and I are entering, we still work. We love what we do. And I, I expect to do it for the rest of my life, but um, I want to enjoy this part of my life. Um, and so I'm looking, you know, listen, I am a type two diabetic. This is something I've been managing in my life for 35 years. Um, I have to manage it with exercise. I have to manage it. I try to use as few, I try to use as few, uh, external chemicals as possible. Um, but use the ones that are right when, you know, when it's smart, I, you know, listen, metformin's a smart drug. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff going on with that. Um, but recognize that there are environmental challenges that we have that you have to be aware of that are challenging you to, this is where this term biohacking comes from. What is the effect right. of living in an aquarium? Um, you know, and, um, and being able to adjust and, and thrive in that environment. Yeah. And it's really all about stacking, you know, obviously, you know, people with you know, significant uh, disease, it's going to be a problem, but even in those cases, you know, it's, it's beginning that process of, okay, let's start stacking all the things that you can do, you know, to begin to optimize your health. And, yeah. and what's interesting with that is it, it brings about a certain kind of accountability to the patients. And this is one of the things that I talk about in, in the masterclass is helping, you know, doctors realize that they don't have to be responsible for everything. It's about getting their clients, as I call them, I don't call them patients anymore, their clients engaged in the process Right. Recognizing that, yes, it's an investment, you know, you know, buying a supplement like uh, spermidine, you know, is is an investment in in, in being able to enjoy life. And so um, so doctors can and have a, can go through a wholesale. They can do affiliate programs. Yep, well. we have a whole we have a wholesale program. The exciting news is that uh, for the last year and a half, uh, our initial products, what we call spermidine life is a one milligram a day supplement. Um we are literally are receiving the first boxes of a six milligram a day supplement that's for sale only through physicians. Right. Um, you can buy our one milligram through Amazon and across our website, but the six milligram product will only be available through physicians. Um, and we're, we're really excited about it. It's, it's this higher dose. Listen, what we, what we know is the amount of spermidine in foods is decreasing we have to we we know that um you know listen modern agriculture has given us a lot of things but one of the challenges are the necessary nutrients there for long life um there might be carbohydrates there but that but we may be nutrient weak on a lot of the other things and and in fact spermidine is one of those molecules um we're having trouble finding spermidine rich wheat in the united states to produce this product here so we have to get it from europe um and that's and so far we're getting all of all of our spermidine rich wheat germ is coming from central europe southern germany austria northern italy and so forth hungary yeah. um so this is where um this is where we get it from and this is just this is just one of those byproducts of of technology and industry and agriculture and the big food industry so um you know i'm not going to hammer on any of them because you know they're just in Listen, they're in business to make a buck, um, but I'm not going to depend on big food to supply me food that I thrive on um, because they just can't do it. Um, they just yeah, can't do at it. The, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's and, and the, again, this is again what I talk about in the master class is this, is that for us doctors to remain relevant, we also have to become, you know, excellent educators with all the choices out there. And, and help our, our clients make better lifestyle choices, you know, better food choices, exercise choices, you know, light choices, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. as well, but also supplements. And so, so that's, that's why, you know, I appreciate your time today, Don, uh, regarding and um, These are things that, you know, as a doctor, we're never trained on. These are things that in the medical literature, we just don't hear about. Right. So I'm excited to be bringing this to my colleagues because the truth is, is that there are so many people out there right now that are going online, finding all sorts of biohacks that may be good or may not be good. Right. And, and the doctors don't have any idea of it. And so in this manner, doctors get a handle on the great products out there. Yours is one of those. Excited about the six milligram one. 
And so um, I'm going to be offering, you know, uh, different links so that docs can read some of that literature and also a specific way to, to connect with you where there's affiliate programs, special pricing programs and all that. So, so Don, um, I really want to thank you once again. My, listen, my, I thank you. My pleasure. Um, and anything that we can do to support, I, I think you're exactly right. I think there's a lot of people that have gone into medicine with the best of intentions um, and they wind up in, in, in any bureaucracy. I don't care if it's politics or education or food or, or medicine, you get caught up in this, in the, in the bureaucracy and it's hard. And I know a lot of physicians out there are, are tired, they're frustrated, and we're seeing this transition to, uh, to what we call functional medicine, or, or, and it's functioning outside of the, the service for care industry. You know, the, the, um, so listen, we're excited to be part of that and support it and um, bring some in interesting products to help. Great. Uh, I really appreciate that. And, and the term that I like that I think is, is really you know, the most re relevant because it also relates to our role in it. And it's really called, you know, personalized health optimization. Mm -hmm. So um, really, you know, excited about promoting that again. Once again, Don, thank you so much. I do hope you found this conversation helpful to you and you discovered some new resources that you can then provide to your clients, your patients, as well as fuel your business. See, that's my mission as the doctor's guide and also as part of the masterclass fuel, getting back in the driver's seat of your practice. Look, it's hard enough these days to stay afloat in our business. We need to start thinking differently. We need to start looking for resources outside of what traditional medicine. And so I'm hoping you're discovering this. And if you'd like more information, you know, just reach out to me. And once again, you know, tap into this new insight, this new information, and make some shifts in your practice.